Air Commandos. Highly trained specialists of the United States Air Force Special Air Warfare Forces. This report shows what they do and why we have them. In 1961, the communists, realizing that our military strength blocked them from the short road to global conquest, intensified operations designed to gain control of neutral and developing nations. Their weapons, exploitation of little wars, wars of insurrection, guerrilla wars. To stem this type of aggression, the U.S. military services have built special warfare forces. In the Air Force, these men are the Air Commandos, technicians trained in all the air aspects of counterinsurgency operations, guerrilla warfare, and related activities. Men who are participating instructor advisors, who can teach and assist the military of friendly nations to maintain their own internal security when faced with the threat of communist-inspired insurgency. Today's Air Commando Force began with activation of the 4400th Combat Crew Training Squadron at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida in April 1961. It had a modest component of 32 aircraft and 360 men. In November 61, the squadron sent a detachment to South Vietnam. Shortly after arrival, this unit was training South Vietnamese Air Force crews under actual combat conditions. As the communist guerrilla threat grew and more friendly nations requested training in counterinsurgency air operations, special air warfare forces increased. By April 1962, a special air warfare center under tactical air command had been established at Eglin Air Force Base. By mid-1964, the center forces expanded to a commando wing of four tactical squadrons and a combat applications group. Also, there are five air commando squadrons authorized under the Pacific Command, another squadron at Sembach, Germany under the European Command, and one at Howard Field, Panama, operating with the Southern Command. Air commando strength stands at a total of 11 squadrons, 269 aircraft, and approximately 6,000 authorized personnel. At Headquarters USAF, a special air warfare division under the Directorate of Operations and the Special Warfare Division in the Plans Directorate serve as USAF points of contact for all counterinsurgency matters. A similar staff organization exists at TAC Headquarters. Four Air National Guard groups join the Special Air Warfare Mission, the 143rd in Rhode Island, the 135th in Maryland, the 130th in West Virginia, and the 129th in California. Special Air Warfare courses have been developed and are included in the curriculum of the Air Force Academy and the Air University. The center at Eglin is the Air Force focal point for special air warfare. In coordination with the other services, it develops the doctrines, tactics, procedures, and equipment used by Air Force forces in special warfare. In addition to building and maintaining effective counterinsurgency forces, the center is principal agent for the Air Force unconventional warfare responsibility. Close liaison with the Army's Special Warfare Center facilitates the joint service operations necessary to both counterinsurgency and unconventional warfare. The CAG, Combat Applications Group, is a major element of the Special Air Warfare Center. It develops weapons, equipment, and tactics for air commando use. Authorized to work directly with industry, their time yardstick is quick reaction from idea to combat use. Major equipment improvement programs are handled by the Air Force Systems Command. The Air Commando Wing, supported by the 4420th Combat Support Group, is the training and replacement center for Air Commando units. It provides operationally ready forces to STRICOM, LATCOM, 
and augments the special air warfare forces of the overseas commands. Located at Eglin's Hurlburt Field, the wing has four tactical squadrons. Many of the aircraft date from the days of World War II, but they are well suited to the various demands of counterinsurgency. They're relatively simple to operate and maintain and are found in the Air Force inventories of newly developing nations. A post-war trainer, the T-28, modified with a bigger engine, ordnance delivery, and photo reconnaissance capabilities. The A-1E, formerly the Navy AD-5, with an external ordnance load of 8,000 pounds plus four 20 millimeter cannons, can carry as many as seven passengers or 2,000 pounds of supplies. It's also used for medical evacuation and photo reconnaissance. The existence of this ex-Navy aircraft in the Air Force inventory is an example of the military services cooperation in special warfare operations, providing a considerable savings in tax dollars. The veteran B-26 becomes the B-26K, a practically new or remanufactured aircraft. Long range with twin engine reliability, the B-26K is an effective aircraft for close ground support and light bomb interdiction. Its day and night photo reconnaissance mapping ability and short field takeoff add to its versatility as counterinsurgency aircraft. The numerous airlift aircraft in the Air Commando inventory, the C-123, the C-46, and the C-47, reflects the Air Force emphasis on preventing insurgency as well as combating it. In humanitarian work, these planes are used for airlift of supplies and personnel, medical evacuation, and search and rescue. With their loudspeakers and leaflet drop, they can be used to deliver emergency warnings or become a communications link through which the host government can maintain close contact with its people in even the most isolated regions. The U-10 serves the commandos as a light cargo and utility aircraft. Its short takeoff and landing ability make it ideally suited for special air warfare and it can be equipped with floats for water operations. For photo reconnaissance, the Combat Applications Group designed a special door that mounts two cameras, one vertical, the other oblique. These are operated from the cockpit, singly, together, timed, or pulse. The flexibility essential to all commando operations has been incorporated in their aircraft. A fighter becomes photo capable, or can carry passengers, or evacuate wounded. Airlift and utility aircraft can also be used for psychological operations and photo reconnaissance. This versatility allows a reduction in the total number of aircraft required, an important factor when operating at remote locations. Personnel selected for air commando duty are carefully screened. Then, after survival training, they report to the Special Air Warfare Center. Throughout their training at the center, each commando, regardless of rank or job, must participate in a vigorous physical conditioning program. Qualified instructors train them in hand-to-hand -hand combative measures, based on the principles of judo and karate. For personal protection and to provide their own airfield defense, all commandos, including medics, must qualify in small arms use. Their weapons, the 38 caliber revolver, the M16 Armalite rifle. The commandos were the first unit of any service to adopt this versatile weapon, a six pound field piece combining the accuracy of a sniper rifle with the firepower of a machine gun. Commandos receive language instruction in either Spanish or French. Each class is held to a maximum of six. This affords the closest approach to individual instruction. Upon graduation, each man has a practical vocabulary of from 400 to 800 words. Prior to overseas deployment, 
the men are given a detailed orientation of the assigned area. This covers the general history, geography, and climate, and emphasizes the customs, habits, personalities, and culture of the people. Air commandos have their own mobile photo processing cell. Each unit is self-sufficient, provides its own power and water, handles complete processing from exposed negative to developed print. The men are thoroughly cross-trained. Camera repairmen can move into any part of lab operations. Processing technicians and photo interpreters can perform camera maintenance. All are qualified aerial photographers. In photo, as in all commando training, emphasis is placed on making each man an instructor so that when deployed, he can teach. The commandos are equally self-sufficient in communications. They have self-powered mobile units and can go into any area anywhere and maintain a complete communication system. HF, UHF, VHF, FM, CW, single sideband, and teletype are used. Commandos can also set up air-based telephone networks and public address systems. All are cross-trained in various communications functions. Air commando medics are assigned directly to the wing and overseas squadrons. Portable dispensaries are used when they deploy. In addition to caring for commando personnel, they assist in medical training programs, teaching preventive medicine in cooperation with host governments. Many of the medics are also jump qualified, providing the commandos with a paramedic capability. Strike reconnaissance air crew training stresses close air support of ground forces with discriminate ordnance delivery. Emphasis is placed on complete competence at night, the time when insurgent guerrillas tend to be most active. Navigation, without using modern sophisticated navigational aids, becomes primary. Pilotage and dead reckoning are emphasized. Flight crews are trained in visual reconnaissance and reporting. They are also qualified in photo reconnaissance and photo mapping. Airlift utility air crews must learn short field operations on rough strips. They become experienced in day and night, long range, low level navigation, using only the basic aids. They learn troop carrier operations with accurate paradrop delivery of personnel and supplies. Airlift utility crews become expert in land or water infiltration and exfiltration. They become specialists in cargo delivery using low altitude delivery systems. In all of these activities, major emphasis is on night operations. Each man of every crew, strike and airlift, is also trained to instruct others. The air commandos and the army special forces participate in frequent joint training exercises, 
stressing not only counterinsurgency, but unconventional warfare. Air Force experience in unconventional warfare dates back to World War II. Unconventional warfare is principally the exploitation of the resistance existing within enemy-held or dominated territory. By feeding this resistance with instructors to teach tactics, with guns, ammunition, radios, and food, an organized guerrilla force can be established to operate behind enemy lines. Properly equipped, supplied, and controlled, a resistance force operating in support of the conventional forces becomes a formidable strategic weapon. In Latin America, most commando activities are military civic action programs that teach the country's military air force to help their own people to help themselves. The air force has always emphasized this phase of counterinsurgency as a way to deter the outbreak of active guerrilla warfare. In civic action planning, as in all phases of counterinsurgency, the commandos participate with representatives of our own country team. This includes the Military Advisory Assistance Group, members of the Agency for International Development, the U.S. Information Agency, and the State Department. Such coordination enhances the overall U.S. program, eliminates duplication of effort, reduces the number of personnel required, and lowers the cost of assistance. Many Latin American villages are practically isolated. Narrow, winding jungle trails and rivers are their only means of communication and transportation. Essential air transportation cannot be introduced because there are no landing areas. In many cases, small runways can actually be built with equipment and instructions delivered from the air. After telling the villagers of the airstrip plan, instructions are dropped. These outline simple steps for building the airfield. The necessary tools for clearing and leveling the proposed landing area are also airdropped. Villagers attack their project eagerly. The commando plane returns periodically to check their work from the air and give additional instructions. In a matter of weeks, the people have built their own landing strip and without the aid of technical assistance on the ground. A previously remote, isolated area has been moved closer to its nation's capital and other towns and villages. Transportation has been cut from weeks or months to a matter of hours. The economic, medical, and social conditions of the people can be rapidly improved. The general education level can be raised. Aircraft can now reach these previously inaccessible areas and bring in instructional aids, books, newspapers, etc. Students pursue wanted education. In learning about their country, they are drawn closer to their government, making them a harder target for communism. Many streams, although they look beautiful, become contaminated because they are used for sewage disposal. Consequently, many small villages throughout Latin America are without safe drinking water. By airdropping required material and construction plans, the air commandos teach other air forces to help their own people in solving many problems. 
Cement, airdrop to this village, was used to construct a well. By providing safe drinking water, improving the general health, the government shows its concern for the welfare of its people. One of the most useful and rewarding civic actions is the preventive medicine program, conducted in cooperation with the local government. For areas with only the barest airfield facilities, the commandos have designed special medical kits, portable dispensaries fully equipped for outpatient treatment. Certain medicines and equipment are included in the kits at all times. Other supplies are added depending on where they are to be used or the medical problem to be encountered. Medical care is readily accepted and the program's value proved by the large number of patients repeatedly treated. Although military civic actions are a major part of counterinsurgency programs, tactical training in counterinsurgency air operations is also fundamental in maintaining internal security. For example, in the Middle East, the Iranian government requested such training. A small joint training team of air commandos and army special forces was sent immediately to instruct the Imperial Iranian Army and Air Force on ways to use their existing equipment to counter insurgent actions. Iranian Air Force crews were taught crating, parachute packing, and loading of various cargo for precision aerial supply. They were instructed in air navigation using grid maps. Air Commando combat controllers safety checked Iranian army paratroopers. The joint training team also taught troop carrier operations with rapid deployment by airdrop. Iranian air crews learned aerial reconnaissance, reporting procedures, close air support with accurate ordnance delivery. Iranian army personnel were instructed in guiding strike aircraft in close support, target marking, how to lay out landing and drop zones, use of the air support request network. Iranian army desert patrols can now count on air support, rapid delivery of food, ammunition, gasoline, or reinforcements, air firepower, and aerial reconnaissance. This increased the range and effectiveness of the patrol's coverage. Our counterinsurgency training program resulted in the Iranians establishing an Iranian Army Special Forces Group and a special air warfare unit co-located in Tehran. The important capability developed by our small initial training effort was quickly recognized by the Iranian government. Another joint air commando special forces team was requested. Larger in size, it expanded on the original program and terminated in a four-month field exercise. Over 100,000 Iranian military and paramilitary forces participated. Special air warfare assistance expands from purely tactical training to training and operational support when active insurgency exists. In South Vietnam, the original commando unit has grown from 16 aircraft to an authorized strength of five strike and airlift squadrons. The South Vietnamese Air Force, working with the Military Advisory Assistance Group, increased substantially in size and effectiveness. The U.S. Air Force action in South Vietnam is an example of our approach to the employment of special air warfare forces. A hard core of specialists, air commandos, augmented as required by other tactical and support elements. Reconnaissance, air weather, communications, and transportation. 
All these U.S. Air Force elements cooperate in providing requested assistance to the Republic of Vietnam in their war against communist aggression. In addition to the training conducted by the center and overseas squadrons in Vietnam, Germany, and Panama, requested Air Commando Survey and Mobile Training Teams have been sent to Thailand, the Middle East, Africa, Southern Europe, and many countries in Latin America. Many other requests have been received, and commitments are steadily increasing. The government of the United States of America realizes that the primary responsibility for dealing with the problems of internal security must be assumed by the indigenous government. Counterinsurgency and counter-guerrilla warfare are an internal struggle, fought not only with military weapons, but in the minds of men. Americans cannot by themselves fight and win all the possible communist-inspired insurgent actions. But we can create conditions under which such a war can be won by directly assisting nations so attacked in their fight to retain independence and freedom.